Friday, July 12th. Big week. Oh my goodness gracious. Um, Chair Powell spoke to Congress and made it as clear as he can make it that there's a rate coming, great cut coming at the end of this month. It could be as large as a half a percentage point instead of just a quarter, but a quarter is likely. Um, and there's a probability of at least one additional cut this year. Um, I, I, the top confusion with all clients all the time, long-term rates behave differently than the Fed's short-term interest rate. For decades and decades, the market for long-term interest rates, long-term bonds and mortgages, anticipates future Fed cuts to come. So mortgage rates have fallen about a percent and a quarter from five and a quarter in December all the way down to four. The Fed hasn't done anything. So the Fed's going to do some things now, but it's not an accident that overnight from yesterday to, yesterday, from yesterday to today, mortgage rates rose. They went ever, ever so slightly, but are looking as though they're at a bottom. Now, all of that depends on what happens next. Uh, that is in the economy. Um, in the printed copy, the weekly that I write that's near this video, there's a link to a speech by Mark Kearney, who's the governor of the Bank of England. He's one of the best central bankers there's ever been. He's so good that he was the head of the Bank of Canada. And when he retired from that job, the Bank of England hired him to do that job. And Kearney confirms everything that Powell said about the risks at hand. And those risks are trade and the global economy, period. Trade and the global economy. Um, everybody who blogs, um, everybody with, who blogs in any sense, tries to avoid politics whenever possible, but it's not possible. The only reason that global trade and the global economy are at risk is because of Mr. Trump. If he had not begun a trade war uh, last year, we would not be at the risk that we are. Now, trade disputes are arguably as old as mankind. Uh, they go back to the Siberian steppes, and before that, to Africa, 100,000 years ago. <clears throat> Modern times, the great trade agreements, currency agreements, at Bretton Woods in 1944 to figure out how to operate the world in the aftermath of World War II gave way to GATT, the General Agreements on Trade. And uh, GATT, round after round after round of negotiations to try to drop tariffs all over the world and to encourage more and more free and open trade, and they worked beautifully. Um, other aspects of trade negotiations are the World Trade Organization. The World Bank is involved, the International, the International Monetary Fund is involved. And everything that we know about trade negotiations says that they are best done in private. And they are never done, especially in public, demanding that somebody else surrender. People don't do that. We wouldn't do that. China is not going to do that. There may not be a face-saving way out of this for Mr. Trump. But there's absolutely, certainly, no trade deal forthcoming from China in which China appears to kneel. It, it, it isn't going to happen. And yet here we are with the global economy, sooner or later the local economy, at risk because of this trade war. Um, I, in some respects it's reassuring and refreshing to know what to watch. It, it, it's not anything else. Just watch that. Um, shifting gears, Mr. Powell, before Congress, also simply announced that the relationship between um, employment and inflation, which was dominant and very strong 50 years ago, by 20 years ago had stopped functioning. I mean, you could hear a pin drop as the words came out of his mouth. Uh, most of us who do this work have felt that that was the case for a long time. Um, the bond market and financial space is not particularly polite, and it's certainly not grateful. And the thought came to me after Powell spoke. Two thoughts came to me. The first one is, uh, 
if that relationship ended 20 years ago, m might you have noticed and said so maybe 15 years ago? How about 10? Five? How about last year? Um, that thought, as unkind as it is, leads to the second thought, and I appeal to your sense of humor. Um, if you make a statement like an economic relationship, powerful until 50 years ago, ending 20 years ago, um, the gods of finance, the Greeks understood the gods. The, the Greeks, the ancient Greeks understood that the gods put words in our mouths and acted through us. If you say something like, um, uh, uh, the most powerful law affecting the operations of central banks no longer applies, um, the gods have a way of saying, well, <laughs> that's what you think. Uh, they didn't, those laws didn't operate for the last 20 years, but just because you've made that observation, now they do again. Um, there's a chance that something else is going to happen here. Um, the central banks of the world are united in a process of easing credit to offset this stupid trade war. They all know that the primary risk of that easing is to make money so easy that we get asset bubbles again, and especially in the stock market. Overnight, Thursday to Friday, Thursday by surprise, yesterday, we got surprisingly strong consumer price index numbers for the United States that show that inflation may in fact be running at the Fed's target, even though those rules don't apply anymore. And we got the same numbers out of Europe. Both Germany and France had uh, solid upticks in the rate of inflation announced yesterday. And yesterday and today, the stock market in complete oblivion, the stock market opens and goes to a new high every day. The, the stock market, the reason that the central banks are easing money and making stock markets prone to bubbles is because the central banks fear that the world is going to fall apart. That thought is lost on the stock market. Um, so as always, we will see, but um, e everything that matters now is how these trade negotiations go, and uh, if we can find some fig leaf of some kind to put especially the ones involving China behind us, uh, it would be a big help. Uh, interest rates might bottom, interest rates might even go back up, but that's a much better trade than the trade war. Thank you.